Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am General Novel. This edition Stop Stories. More than 10,000 St. Lucians have received the AstraZeneca vaccine. The St. Lucia Red Cross and the Government of Japan team up for grassroots human security. And PAHO to accelerate access to COVID-19 vaccines in the region. Public response to the national vaccination campaign continues to grow. The Ministry of Health and Wellness says at Tuesday 9th March 2021, 10,437 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine had been administered to St. Lucians across the island. Over the past two weeks, emphasis has been placed on reaching the target groups in phases 1A and 1B, ensuring that as many people in these target groups are protected. These include frontline workers within clinical and national security settings, senior citizens and people living with chronic health conditions. Assistant Principal Nursing Officer Tekla Jabatis is the immunization manager. The response at the various vaccination sites has been very encouraging. This level of interest we see as an appreciation by our citizens of the health benefits of the vaccines and the opportunity it presents for regaining some measure of normality as we continue to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. The vaccination campaign has been undertaken by bringing together partners across all sectors and with a wide range of interest. This partnership has started with us within the health sector with the public and private healthcare practitioners undertaking national vaccination efforts collaboratively. The successful rollout of the campaign also requires the involvement of our non-health allies across all sectors nationally, including the commercial, tourism, education and transportation sectors, to name a few. It is important that these sectors are targeted as people within these groupings are at medium risk of being exposed to COVID-19. Persons working in the transportation sector such as minibus drivers, teachers and tourism sector workers are advised to access the community vaccination sites to access the vaccine. In the coming weeks, mass vaccination exercises will be undertaken for the second phase of the vaccination campaign. The ministry is encouraging people who fall within phase two to pre-register to receive their vaccine. Pre-registering is valuable to the Ministry of Health as it assists in logistical planning and resources required at vaccination sites. The Ministry of Health is aware that there are individuals with special needs, including the elderly, and people with mobility challenges who are unable to access the vaccination sites. These individuals, their family or caregivers are encouraged to contact the nearest community wellness center to register their loved ones. Vaccination will be facilitated through home visits by the community health nurses. To date, Majority of the elderly homes have been covered and will be completed in the coming week. Vaccines have proven to save lives. People are therefore encouraged to access the various sites for the vaccine. Ensure that a valid form of identification is taken with you when coming for the vaccine to assist entering you into our national health management information system. Assistant Principal Nursing Officer Tekla Jabatis. And as workers in the tourism industry begin vaccination against the coronavirus, agents from subsectors have been given an account of their displacement in the last year and express hope for restoration thanks to the immunization effort. Transport, vending, duty-free, adventure and recreation agents find their operations at the mercy of COVID-19 effects. During a special vaccination exercise for leaders in the industry, Cox & Company Limited's tourism department head, Eleanor Ray, encouraged residents of St. Lucia to get vaccinated. Cox & Company is a port agent and cruise ship operator on island. 
Since March last year, as you know, the Coxon Company, we're one of the major port agents and cruise ship operators, and uh, we've had absolutely no cruise ships coming in since March last year. So we are being very optimistic and hopeful that we will see the resumption coming up this year. And um, by all means, we would like to see as many, many of our staff and also the persons who work within the industry be vaccinated so we can actually move ahead once the cruise ship starts coming back. Retailers like Duty Free Caribbean Holdings are also heavily reliant on cruise arrivals. Company executive Joycelyn Edwards says sales are significantly lower than usual for reasons all leading back to the pandemic. She says lives and livelihoods are at stake if we do not get vaccinated. Less flights coming in, we have no cruise ships coming into the ports. So you found that persons were not, and with the economy, people were not ready to spend the little that they earn and persons who had lost jobs so for us the business um, it was not business as usual especially November December when we had mm -hmm. peak mm -hmm. into January and then when we had to close again in January we took another you know hit as to our sales so if everybody would just realize the benefits because a lot of persons who are saying no, they will not take it. They too have families who are dependent on them. And if they don't do what they are supposed to do, that means, you know, we will go back to where we were. Sea Spray Cruises General Manager Cory Duvaux believes the vaccination campaign is also a step in the right direction. His business too has been limited due to the effects of the pandemic. It's been a, a, 12, a tough 12 months. Um, we've opened, closed, opened again. Um, we are able to operate right now, but it is on a limited basis. Um, sites and attractions are closed. So even though we are mainly do sea-based um, tours, mm -hmm. a lot of that involves visiting the volcano, for example, yeah. um, sites in Sufra and stuff, which we're not able to do right now. So, and then the limited amount of tourists on island um, it's, it's just, you know, we, we're taking what we get, but it is very slow. Um, and there are other businesses that are in a worst case than us where they're not able to open or have no, no business at this time. Leaders in the tourism sector are the latest group among the private sector and the civil society to endorse the government's COVID-19 immunization effort in the hopes of expediting normalcy on Ireland. PAHO Director Carissa Etienne welcomed the expansion of the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccines in the Americas and reported that PAHO is working closely with member countries to accelerate access throughout the region. The Bahamas has received its first COVID-19 vaccines due to the Indian government's donation of 20,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, Dr. Etienne said during her weekly media briefing. Peru is scheduled to receive its first shipments of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine today through COVAX, the global mechanism to ensure equitable access to vaccines regardless of a country's income or size of its economy. Last week, Colombia became the first country in Latin America to receive vaccines via the COVAX mechanism. Today, these doses are being delivered to at-risk groups including indigenous communities in the country's Amazon region. Every country participating in COVAX has been informed about the number of doses that they will be receiving through May of this year. We've been very pleased with how quickly countries in our region have responded to COVAX agreements so they can begin to receive the 28.7 million doses that have been allocated to the Americas over the next three months. Over the last week, our revolving fund has been working closely with member states to accelerate access to COVID vaccines. For more than 40 years, the revolving fund has helped countries in the Americas vaccinate their populations against debilitating or potentially deadly diseases such as polio, measles, yellow fever, bacterial pneumonia, influenza, and the human papilloma virus HPV. The revolving fund allows nations to pool their resources to purchase vaccines, syringes, and related supplies at lower cost. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic, the revolving fund is representing regional countries with COVAX 
helping them to procure vaccines through the mechanism. The St. Lucia Red Cross is embracing fully its mandate to alleviate the suffering of the most vulnerable whilst promoting human dignity and social inclusion. A special ceremony was held on Wednesday where the St. Lucia Red Cross and the Japanese ambassador signed an agreement under the grant assistance for grassroots human security project. The government of Japan has committed to providing financial aid to the St. Lucia Red Cross to assist those in need and to procure a special vehicle allowing for wheelchair access. President of the St. Lucia Red Cross, Hubert Pierre, explained that the Japanese government has been a reliable and dependable ally and the receipt of this aid will enable the Red Cross to continue fulfilling its mandate. It is important to note that the St. Lucia Red Cross will continue, and I want to re-emphasize this point, will continue not to assist ourselves, but rather to assist the general public. And though this vehicle will be housed here, it belongs to the general public for use. We have been working with people with disabilities for a long time. We have been having youth camps with children with disabilities. And also we had had challenges when it came to transporting them. Even at the St. Lucia Red Cross headquarters, it was difficult for us to get people with welters to come up. And of course, we made the effort to ensure that accessibility can be had by such persons. And suffice it to say, this is a continuation in what we hope to achieve in this country. Ambassador of Japan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Tatsuo Hirayama, highlighted the importance of the work done by the St. Lucia Red Cross. I always find my deepest respect to the Red Cross Society for its global role and also for its community level activities. I trust that the high discipline of the Red Cross Society will enable the procured vehicle and the grant assistance scheme to be utilized most efficiently and effectively. As in the case of our previous assistance, um, projects, this vehicle will become a symbol of our friendship and cooperation between our two countries. Indeed, when the procured vehicle starts its operation to be a helping hand to those who are in need, we would be very satisfied with the investment of about 35,000 US dollars from our, na from our own national budget as its humanitarian and a cooperative value is worth so much more than its monetary value. Terencia Gillard, Director General of the St. Lucia Red Cross, expressed gratitude to the government and people of Japan. It's about nine months ago I started this process in getting the vehicle. I wish to thank the government and people of Japan for once more putting their trust in the St. Lucia Red Cross. As the president mentioned, this is not the first time that we have gone into a partnership, but it's a second vehicle we are getting, and we have also gotten two um, Japanese um, volunteers to work with the Red Cross. And we are indeed happy for the government and people of Japan for always coming to our assistance. The signing ceremony was held on Wednesday, 10th March, 2021. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle au Creole. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe.
Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle a Creole. Monsieur Ota, General, Monsieur Madame, Department qui n'est responsabilité de formation en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale pour NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle à Creole, présenté au Primus Hutchinson. Département d'éducation qui a continué pour travailler à ce développement de cette règle pour gouverner le langage à cette ci L'importance de ça là, c'est le résultat des observances journées internationales pour le langage Mamanou. L'importance là, c'est à ce premier langage, yon individu, ça veut dire langue natale, avec nécessité pour instruire les seuls langages là pour commencer à bonnet en langage yon individu. Le département d'éducation, comme déjà reçu l'assistance finance de l'organisation UNESCO, pour former un plan d'implémentation pour établir un langage national de cette ci C'est là comme nous, ça a été fait en quatre façons. Premièrement, pour adresser le langage créole, ça veut dire pour euh, accepter le créole comme langage officiel à cette ci Deuxièmement, le créole est langage d'instruction, ça veut dire pour servir à leçon pour instruire les étudiants. Et pour que tout étudiant ne parle ni anglais et créole assez bien par de à l'école. Alors, par tant, yo ni pour finir pour finir étude secondaire, yo est capable pour écrire et parler créole assez comme il faut, même quand yo a fait écrire langage anglais. Pour comme ça, la ka continue pour développer capacité les étudiants ni à l'école et en cas yo même, comme déjà commencé à engager les officiers d'éducation, principal l'école, les étudiants et les parents en consultation concernant le programme éducation en langage créole à cette ci Bon, en parlant de ça, le ministre de la Kenya responsabilité pour l'éducation en gouvernement cette ci on est Dr. Gail Rigobert, j'ai pas une opinion concernant l'effort qui a fait pour établir le web pour gouverner le langage créole en système d'éducation pays. Sinon, Dr. Rigobert, il n'y a longtemps que cette ci a parlé concernant l'honneur de la langue créole. Là. Eh, ça c'est qui est brisé. Il déclare qu'il n'y a pas de langage là, c'est fondation, culture et héritage pays. C'est ici, c'est un plusieurs pays à la terre, et particulièrement à Wijo qui a une opposition pour renforcer la significance du langage créole. Dr. Rickabot a félicité les officiers d'éducation qui ont commencé l'initiative là pour placer Kouan à son tête du langage créole et le gouverneur général a été passé. Ça c'est aidé pour l'être lui pour ce tellement grand effort et jamais été en développement de langage créole. Alors, um, c'est un bon travail, c'est mon ministre que j'ai fait avec le langage là. Et, um, moi, je suis obligé de remercier le um, gouverneur général um, de passer, de l'être lui aussi, parce qu'il m'a mené au quartier long et il fait nous comprendre que ce n'est pas pour nous honte pour nous parler créole. Et, et moi, je voulais dire um, publiquement merci, merci, merci en pile pour ça. Parce que moi, quand tu l'es, c'est depuis tant ça, tout nous avons différentes réactions pour les gens parler créole. Donc, so, merci, merci en pile. Et moi, je voulais remercier ce teacher, c'est mon nom, ministre, qui a travaillé sur ça. Et um, pour nous vraiment dire, c'est qu'il t'y nous et pour nous embrasser quand il t'y nous. Et moi, je suis pour faire une dédicace aussi pour moi, ça, par les croyants là, mais. Ministre de l'Éducation, qui a créé la capacité pour lire et écrire les croyants, qui a placé les étudiants à des oppositions en même façon qu'on les a appris l'autre langage. Même si nous avons fait espagnol, et français et anglais, il n'y a pas qu'à faire nos pièces mal pour nous sanir, pas toi et les créoles aussi, et bien ça, nous avons créé le French Lexicon Creole. Pour les sept ici, nous avons créé à ce public là pour obéir à ce protocole là qui est en place pour empêcher la maladie de Corona de Pour les policiers disent que le public a désobéi plusieurs, il a désobéi plusieurs à ce protocole là. Et à présent, la police a pris des marches sérieusement pour que le monde public respecte ces règles. Ou après, la police a montré que entre le 27 décembre 2020, l'année passée, pour les 4 mois de mars 2021, la police a registré 123 cas de situation où le monde public a désobéi ces protocoles. Un résultat de ça, 
police fe kens awet e kote plet kot yomun yo si note ki duska kote mun kasil wa quarantine aksyo sala te ni kos polis pou fe me pou fe asiwe ki dis ase di vidi sala we vi vi wa an quarantine a da yon facilite gouvernement o si de le zot e di vidi a te ni pou atwe a da yon facilite quarantine aussi uh, quarantine gouvernement si l'on rapport hod uh, superintendent machan amansili police registre yon san 61 loto pasaje ki desobeyi protokol ek police teni pou veti yon san yon san 21 se chofer loto pasaje sa la yon rapporte yon si ki uh, 684 edividi te desobeyi protokol sa vle di sa ki pati ka pote mas a soufi jay ek sekte wa Polis awete 69 ek 30 an yo touve kodane 200 pou 600 dola. Yon moun touve kodane osi pou bay 40 nedita servis pou yon komen. Apami se 688 edividia. Polis veti 605 an yo ek se moun sala te Rod Pawes, Gozile, Marigo, Oslawe, Kanawe, Kastri, Viefo ek Babono. Bo, konsene, gwap ebe gay moun ki te komble a da yon plas, polis awete yon ek veti 14 lewestan. Bon, pou hotel, polis awete yon ek veti 9, 10 moun a total te dezobeyi protokol la. Bon, pou moun ki dezobeyi kofiu, se te 36, ek superintendent sili anose ki polis awete 29, pote plet kont sek, ek chak ayo touve kodone yon mil dola. Polis veti 17 an yo, ek lani 24 matye ki ni pou pawet nou volo dias. Se situasyon sa la, se te pawet zwe fo, Miku, Aslawe, Labowi, Kastri, Shwazey, Denyu ek Babono. Superintendent Sili anonse osi polis te ni pou oblije yon moun ki te sorti a korentin pou viwe a chomli. Idi osi la te ni 3 festin an kaye wezidan di wan finisman si menan ek ki pasi a ek plet fet kont de individi, ek se moun sa la kay pawet nou van kay lo dias tou swit. Polis veti yon moun an wezelta di situasyon sa la. La pa ni pies desobeyisyas, si lon superintendan si li, pa ofisye taksi ek wester wa. Ek se kosa, nou to bout nou vela, mese vedam, mou ka mese o top pou ka gade, mou ka bo ou evitasyon pou jene pi mou ako le de konseve la vi kote mou ka ipose to lot nou vela. Merci à Pil Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.